freaking first cut. Golly. Welcome to the First Cut Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your recap episode for the RSM Classic and other golf-related things because lots of golf news coming out this week. And joining me to break it all down, it's him. It's Kyle Porter. KP, welcome to the show. Uh, freaking First Cut there. Mr. Freaking First Cut had his had his baby this week. Sammy Spieth yeah. has arrived. Congrats. Good for him. Baby season. It's great. You- we got a... T- we got- of course, we've got like a million things to talk about, and I lead with Jordan Spieth. That's very, 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 very on brand. It shows that even though we are at the end of the PGA Tour fall portion of this schedule, you, sir, are in midseason form. You are ready to just keep yeah. rocking and rolling, uh, shoehorning Jordo into uh, as many conversations as possible. Well, listen, he's gonna be he's gonna be playing in the next uh, the next PGA Tour event that we see, Tournament of Champions. He's a champion again. He's going to be there with Taylor Gooch, with Colin Marcowa. I know that he is. I know it's not an official PGA Tour event, but is he playing? Is he playing Tiger's event? Is he playing the Hero? Yeah, he is. He's he's also in that with. That's a that's a great. That's actually. It really is. It and it's super interesting because it's like like Bryson's in it, uh, Rory's in it, Morikawa, Spieth, Kepka. I don't know. I, I I can't do all eighteen. I think Hovland's in it. DJ it maybe. So yeah, that that'll be good. Uh, yep. yep, yep, yep. Finau, Rory. Did you say yep. Rory? Reed. I said Xander, Rory. Yeah. Scotty. Oh, Reed. Patty Reed. Hey, this is the this going is back the... to the scene of the crime. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Justin Thomas. Did you say JT? I, don't know I did not say JT. Uh, and the defending champion. Let's just. Ugh, who's the defending champ? This is uh, tough. This is Stinson? really tough. Yeah, Henrik Stenson's in the field. Henrik Stenson won it in nineteen. I'm ready for you can you can make a uh, a hero world challenge uh, <laughs> category Jeopardy category for me and <laughs> and Greg. I'll smoke him. Uh, so far so good. I think you will. Great okay, trophy, well, by the way. Hero world. I know challenge? you're big on. Oh, I'm great. I know you're big on trophies. Excellent trophy. Excellent. I'm gonna rank the trophies in the off season. That's that's one. That's we, on my I don't list. think we. I don't think we talked about the Mayakoba trophy. So did you see they upgraded it? Oh, so, I saw. Last year was just the white chameleon. Eh, whatever. You lean into it. It's fine. This year, the full-on painted version of it, uh, chef's kiss. Beautiful. Beautiful, great improvement. See, I like a tournament that does not get just, just stuck in the mud on the same tour- on the same trophy year after year. Yeah. It's it's yeah, it's true. It was great. I, I, I loved it as well. I, I thought it was awesome. Animal trophies are great. Always great. We've got a lot to talk about. Uh, we do. And we have a lot more to talk about after this week. And we are reaching out to you, the listeners or the viewers, for help. So we are going to do a mailbag episode. Jacob says on Monday. So we're recording this on Sunday. That doesn't seem like enough of a turnaround time. I wonder if that's true. Anyway, we're going to do a mailbag episode. So you can drop your questions in the form of a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. That helps us. It helps you. Thank you very much. I'm sure you can also tweet them at us. I'm sure you could probably also um, DM Jacob. I'm sure he'd love that. I mean, there's probably lots of ways to get a hold of us. And it can be anything golf-related, um, grocery store related. Oh gosh! <laughs> Whatever you want, we'll we'll cover it. We've got nothing else to do, right? Well, bring bring producer Jacob in to confirm that that uh, like because you said it might not be true that we're doing it Monday. So my concern, my concern, Jacob, was that if we're doing it via a podcast review, it takes like forty eight hours for those to appear, and we won't be able to read them in time. Uh not always. Oh, okay. we we have a we have a new way we can. Look at him on sort of the back end. Oh, sure look at look at producer wow. Jacob Seriously. hacking the system. You know, we'll also put a tweet out there. But you know, hey, if you wanna if you wanna be cool and you love the freaking first cut, golly, you can just right. leave a five star review regardless. <laughs> <laughs> That's also yeah. always possible. Yeah. And while you're, you're at you- it, go to the go to the early edge. Leave a five star review there too. There wow. There just there crossover go. appeal. Everything. Let's if you wanna if you wanna trash talk coach and you've already left a five-star review on the first cut, you actually can go to the early edge and leave them another five-star review with trash talking coach in there. Um, I encourage that. 
That's fair. You get you get to say your piece to coach, but you also give the five star review in return. I'm cool with that. I'm fine with that. Win win. Win win win. Thanks, Jacob. Win 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 win. win. We will uh, tweet out a prompt as well. So make sure you are following us. I think it's at First Cut Pod. Now I got to confirm this. Jeez, oh man, you think I'm yes? First Cut Pod on Twitter. All right, KP. Uh, a three-second video clip and two words sent the golfing world into a frenzy on this fall Sunday because – oh, just listen. Hold on. Listen. That right there is a flushed shot, a full swing by one Tiger Woods appearing on the driving range with his new launch monitor and quoting – I don't want to say quoting. The caption says, quote, making progress. How, how many how many takes do you think that took? Uh, that's a good question. So so I would normally say one. One. However, you, do you think Tiger, you know, gave it the, you know, gave it the second look, make sure this is a good swing. This is the first swing people are going to see in nine months since I've had my horrific car accident. Uh, I, let, let's make sure this is a pure one and not one that I towed a little bit. You think, you think he was involved in the, uh, in the send? Well, I was, I was actually thinking more sound than the, than the, uh, it looked mm. that sound was, he was hitting a, uh, I don't know. Is my video going in and out for you? Can you hear me? Yeah, it was. It, yeah, it was a little bit in and out there, but it's uh, seems to be stabilizing a little bit. Oh, sorry about that. Anyway, um, the the noise there was unbelievable. He wasn't. He wasn't even swinging that hard. He I can't believe I'm breaking. I can't believe I'm breaking down the the <laughs> the like the what what's the what's the term for uh, like a like a wavelength. Of like a of like a tiger wedge on a <laughs> podcast on November twenty first. It was preposterous, but it's also it's crazy that he's swinging, right? Uh, yeah. So so nine months removed. I don't have it all in front of me, but the surgeries were extensive off of that February car accident, and still wearing the sleeve on his right leg, which I admittedly have no idea what that is for, but presumably part of his recovery because we've seen it every time he's been out in public uh, yeah. since, since the crash. But uh, yeah, you know, there were rumblings KP and I'm sure you were privy to these that he had been kind of cleared for, for little bits of activity. I assume that was putting and chipping. I was not necessarily expecting to see a full swing on November 21st. I agree. And, you know, there's <laughs> there's so many different ways that we could approach this. There's so many different angles to it. It's it's like the conversation that we had about, um, you know, a, a like what, what did we talk about last week? Like the global tour stuff and and how the PGA tour should work in the future. You could approach that from any number of angles. I think for me, it is um, I don't know, man, like I just haven't really cared that much about it any kind of comeback that he made because I think that I think the most fun and compelling part of the last this this kind of latter stage of his career has been his personal growth like just as a as a human you know and he's been as open as he will ever be about that and that's been cool to watch like it it's uh, that sounds silly maybe but just this sort of it, it's almost like he's I think Tiger, it was really hard for him to mature and grow up at a young age because he was just like, it, it, it was Tiger. It was like, it, it was just, it, he was so different than like every other human that he was around. And it just, it made it, it honestly like, it would be such a tough environment to, to grow up in. And so it's almost like he's gotten to the other side of that a little bit and he's, he's seemingly maturing as a person. And that's, I think that's really uh, fun and interesting to watch. And I just, don't, I just haven't cared that much about the golf side of it. Um, but you know, I know a lot now, of people now do. That see, now that we see it, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, and and a lot of people do. And I think, I think it is, I think it is compelling. I also think that. I want to continue to see the the personal side of him, and so if golf, if if playing in tournaments is the means by which to see that, 
I think that's I think that's cool. But I also think, man, you're just stacking. So, I mean, you know, as I was watching that video, I was like, oh yeah, what about the back? That was the surgery right? he had in December. He had a back surgery in December, I think it was car accident in February. I think it was, think it was January. Was it? Ja January. Oh, is that close yeah. to? It? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I just feel like we. we <sighs> It's just easy to forget about all the stuff, you know, and, and I go back to after he won the 2019 masters, you know, there were different articles about like, Hey, this, this back surgery that he had, it might be yeah. a good short term fix, but in the long term, it ain't good. And so what is the, how does that affect, you know, how all of this is going to go? So I don't know. There's just, there's so much to it. I, I think he'll talk at Hero, right? Like he'll probably talk there, which I think will yes. be, uh, I think that'll be really interesting. Yes, that is likely the next time he goes on the record with with anything. I agree with you. I, 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 I'm at peace with like, if Tiger never plays another event, good for, like good for him. Like yeah. be healthy, yeah. be a dad. It's all good. Like I don't need you to come back and get 83 or even try for it. But uh, if this is what he sees, his future in and competing again. And listen, we're, we're one swing on a range uh, compared to competing at the highest levels of golf. But uh, I know that that was the immediate, the immediate reaction for the vast majority of people who saw that on Twitter was, Oh, Augustus five months away, which is yeah. like, well, that's I mean, like I, the, the initial reaction. And, and how could it not be? I wrote that sentence in, in, uh, you know, part of an article that I, that I did for CBS sports.com was the guess is what, whatever, 137 or 147 days away, whatever it is. You know, I was reading an article about, uh, fed about Roger Federer. He had his, um, third knee surgery in September or something like that. He's going to miss Australian open. He said, he's probably going to miss Wimbledon next year, which is kind of crazy to already be like projecting. Right. But the quote that he had in the article, I think it was on, I don't know, New York Times or ESPN.com or something. And he said, I, I'm okay if I never like play in another uh, Grand Slam final or win another major or whatever. But I would like to kind of go out on my terms on the course or on the, on the tennis court. Like even if that means – the third round at the French open or the second round at the U S open or whatever. And I think, I think that's a pretty cool idea for tiger also. Right. I agree. Completely agree. Do you think golfers get to go out on their own terms? Because this is a sport that, um, especially with the accolades that tiger has, he could in theory play the masters forever or until he tells us this is going to be his last one. So I feel like with other athletes, whether it's at the end of a contract, whether it is kind of maybe they've told you this is their last year um, and, and, and they get knocked out of their final tournament. There's this, there's this, there's this moment that everyone there seems to know this is the end. Do you think golfers get that same luxury? Well, Phil has right. Winning Kiowa. That's the you moment. Know, well, and I think like how – that's why it's almost like after the 2019 Masters, it would have been just so sick if Tiger retired. I know. Right? Oh, it would have been the coolest. And I think that – you know, how's the Phil thing going to go over the next 10 years? You know, how does somebody like – I mean, think about um, think about Jack Nicklaus competing at, at the Masters until he was yeah. 58. He finished, what, T6 when he was 58? At Augusta. Bonkers. And so I think that with guys like Tiger and Phil, especially at places like Augusta and an, and an open championship, you're, you're just competing so much with your mind. You're competing so much mentally that it's very different than it, than it like a PGA at Beth page where it, that right. you just, you can't contend with Brooks and, and DJ and Rory and those guys. Um, so I don't know. I think that's a I think that's a really interesting question. Uh, I don't think that Tiger is going to be like you know Ian Woosnam him out there and shooting you know no offense to to Woozy shooting in the eighties at, at Augusta National. No, he won't. But I also feel like he's not going to be the guy that's like this is my last 
six months or something like that, right? You know, in other sports, you get the the victory lap, you get the uh, you know the lifetime achievement award everywhere you go. I, I feel like Tiger's also not the guy because he plays everything so close to the vest to like give us an idea of when it might be over. Yeah, and the, the there was another quote from Federer in there about like I just want to prove to myself that I can one just one final time compete at the highest level. And for those guys, that's what a lot of it is about, right? Like proving to yourself as you've done for the last 20 years, like, do I have, do I have what it takes? Do I have anything in the tank to be able to do that? And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, it, it is going to be, I mean, JT talked about this on the no laying up podcast a couple of weeks ago of like, cause it's not like Tiger's going to be playing, you know, shooting 77s and then go to Augusta. He's going to want to be competitive, but also I think he, I don't know. You want to play Augusta for a final time, right? You you don't you don't want the the car wreck to be like the exclamation point on your career either. Yeah. So I have to think that he's going to get to some sort of place where he's able to 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 compete as much as he would like to be able to play those tournaments. Yeah. Makes sense. Obviously, two weeks away from Hero World Challenge, not next week, or I guess, depending on when you're listening to it, not week of Thanksgiving, uh, week after that is Hero World Challenge and seemingly Tiger as the host uh, will speak and we might get some more information. So we will obviously keep you updated on. Do you think, Ty yes. do you think he'll play the Masters in April? I mean, that's the question, right? Like that's the. I, I'm, at, I'm at the point where I will say no and I will be thrilled to be proven wrong like if you if you're counting out tiger woods at this point that's on you right he has he has made a living of proving everyone wrong i should not do a swing change or multiple swing changes while i'm in my peak um the the surgeries the injuries coming back finding a way to get it done i'm not going to say he i i think it's a long way from hitting shots on the range and tweeting out making progress to playing at the masters especially when you're right he's not going to go there if he doesn't feel He's ready. So I will just protect my heart and say no. And if he shows up there the first full week of April, um, I'll be thrilled. I think he will. I think he'll play. I hope he Which will. is, it, it, it's such a, I mean, I'm making predictions about, you know, <laughs> five, five months from now about somebody who I've seen one swing of over the last year. So, so the real, the real, like, you know, we could dive into the conspiracy theories. Like what if this swing was from four months ago and now he's way further along than he's even <laughs> showing here <laughs> and he just shows up in Augusta, like rocket and roll it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who can say, who knows? Who can say, who can yeah, say? He didn't hold I, up a I, newspaper in front of the swing. I don't know. <laughs> no, he didn't. I, uh, it, it, I mean, again, you're, we're, it's preposterous to project this much, but it looked good. And I think that it, it's not like, it's not like you put a, a video out of him hitting like little, little pitch shots, right? right? Little like 10 yard, like, no, it wasn't a driver, but you've also got five months. And if, and if, and if you have that foundation of stability right now, then I, I have to imagine that, that he can build up to something over the next five months that would get him in the kind of the ballpark of, of being able to play Augusta. And if he's hitting full wedges, he's been chipping and putting, right? So, yeah. so it's, it's now just kind of making the progress. So we'll see, obviously yeah. can't, can't wait to talk more about tiger, but we got to go over to the other side of the pond. We've got to go to Europe where Colin Morikawa does it again, adds more hardware to the trophy case wins the race to Dubai, and in turn, KP becomes the first American to ever accomplish the feat. Yeah, I, I was up early this morning. I watched the end. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I watched the end. And he is uh, he's, he's ridiculous. I mean, ridiculous. he... he you know, I think it's interesting. We can go through his. I, I tweeted out all the all the stuff he's done in his first sixty events on as a pro. Uh, but so that's mostly PGA Tour. But so and uh, I think the craziest part about him 
I mean, he was he was like lights out with the putter late, and it and it kind of made me think about. Remember his quote at the Open Championship where he's like, "I know I'm not a great putter, but also when the chips are down, I'm a freaking great putter." I think he said like, it again. Oh. I think he said it again today. I think he said, he? "I know." I I think he said something very very similar to that. Like, I know on paper I'm not a great putter, but um, he said in these moments I feel like I can't miss or something like that. I'll see if I can find the quote. He's absolutely yeah, right. which <laughs> for sure. And and I think it. I think it. Uh, I think that actually makes some sense a little bit. I, I don't, I don't love going too far down the road of, Oh, well, just, you know, champions, which just they just win. And you're like, I don't know. Sometimes a lot of times they don't, you know? <laughs> um, but I think it makes sense because so much, and we, we don't give enough credit to this. I don't think so much of golf is so mental and the best players are the best mental players also. And so when, when pressure gets ratcheted up, it makes sense that, um, somebody like him would thrive because that's what, you know, that's why he's one of the best players. I don't know if I'm explaining that very well, but um, all that to say, like, so he's won five uh, uh, stroke play events that were not like he won the Barracuda, which is stable for in his other five, his final round scoring average is 66.2. So he had a 66. Uh, well, let me see if I can do this off the top of my head. 66 at the, at the, um, work day when he when he bjt 66 at the pga 69 at concession 66 at the open and no excuse me 64 at the pga uh 69 at the work day 66 at the open and then 66 today in dubai 66.2 final round scoring average when he wins that's sick that's so good and two of those were majors do you have, can you pull up the tweet that I, where I listed all of the stuff that he's done over the first 60? Yeah, here we go. Morikawa's first 60 events as a professional, two major championship wins, six wins overall, four second place finishes. I like that. Uh, 24 top tens, five missed cuts, five out of 60, $18.5 million in the bank account. First to win two majors in eight starts since one Bobby Jones, first American to win the race to Dubai, and also. A three zero and one record at the Ryder Cup. That is a full resume through sixty events. That's a it's a Hall of Fame career, right? It's it's uh, I don't know Retief Goosen's career cool. in thirty months. God, Retief yeah. was the was the comp that I pulled for like just this career uh, earlier in the week. I, I think it matches up pretty decently. I don't, you, I don't know. You can look at. Retief's Wikipedia page or whatever. I think the sickest stat out of all those is six wins and five missed cuts in 60 events. Yeah. Because, well, remember, because he Mar had the streak right out of the gate, like 23 or 24 in a row. Yeah. And he's so, he's, he's actually, a, I think, a fairly, he's kind of a volatile player. Like he, he did this after the, after the PGA last year. He, he falls off a, he fell off a bunch. He did it after what the Olympics this year. He got a little injured, fell off a bunch. And yet, like despite the volatility, he doesn't miss cuts. He just he it, it's his his ceiling is high, really high, really really high. Maybe one of the maybe him and Rom have the highest ceilings, and his floor is a little bit lower than you would think it is, but it's still high enough to not miss cuts. And that combination is just he is he's he's awesome. And I thought it was really cool. This was a. Uh, a very uh, tiny detail, but I think sometimes, and we've had him on here, I think uh, since he started winning a lot, he's gotten into this mode of being like pretty, like, a, uh, like, po like, like, like polish. Like he kind of says the right stuff and says, I think sometimes what he thinks he should say, right. Yes. Instead of like what he actually feels. And he broke down at the end of this interview. Um, he was inter being interviewed on the final green in Dubai, and he broke down a little bit about just like um, his his relationship. His grandfather had died, and just his relationship with the the people around him. And I thought that was awesome because it was like, yeah, be yourself, dude. Like that's okay. It's okay to right. do that. You don't have to say like whatever what you think everybody else wants you to say. And I think it's I think it's so important to maintain that like um, self awareness. Or that not not self awareness, but just like that, um, 
being yourself, whatever word I'm trying to find there going into the future, because you're going to have a lot of stuff projected on you that people are going to want you to be. And I thought that was, I thought that was a cool moment. They gave me some, some encouragement for him moving forward. And he's like the most likable guy in the world. So just be your genuine self. You're like the most likable person on the planet. Like it's all, it's all good brother. Um, He will, uh, according to Nosferatu, if you're into the OWGR points, he will earn more points this year than anybody. Rom and Spieth finishing second and third. He cannot be caught the rest of the calendar year. Uh, Also, as we just talked about very briefly on, I think it was Tuesday's pod, the fact that he's the first American to win the race of Dubai race to Dubai, he is also likely to be the last because of, well, I guess in the future things could change, but uh, two less WGC events, you have to have like a really good run in those and major championships, even get yourself in contention. Then you got to go win the final basically. So uh, this might be a feat that few others accomplish KP, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And it's a list. I mean, we talked about it on Tuesday, Norman, Seve, Faldo, Woosnam, uh, Goosen, Els, Rory, uh, Stinson. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a list of basically just hall of famers from the, from the European tour. And, um, yeah, he, he went over and, and, uh, and did it and did it in a way that was, you know, it's kind of how Rom won the U S open where you're hanging around, hanging around, hanging around. And then you just, you just kind of slam the door at the end. Yeah. Um, over, oh, you know, over guy. I know we're going to talk about Rory, but over guys yeah. like Rory and and uh, I can't remember Alex. I don't know who else was. Other. Fitzpatrick played really well uh, on Sunday, um, and that seems to be a little bit of of more Kawa's mo is just to hang around, hang around, hang around, and then and then slam the door. And that's why I think like having you know we hear this talk about like fifty four hole PGL events. It's like man, seventy two is such a great number, right? <laughs> seventy two is a great number because. It's it's long enough to to um, like only have kind of the the best guys in contention, but it's short enough that uh, it, it just seems to produce like really good winners. And I think right. there's a lot of stuff that golf gets wrong. Seventy two hole events is not one of them. I, I think that number is is really really good, and we've seen more Cowa take advantage of it over the last couple of years. Well, if this was a 54-hole event, it would have been Rory McIlroy's, but it was not. 72 holes. Rory slept on the lead Saturday evening and shot a 74 in the final round, including a couple of tough putts coming down the stretch. He ends up finishing in a tie for sixth. And KP, the thing that was dominating Twitter moments before the Tiger video dropped was the photo of Rory McIlroy. And I laughed because I, I just I don't know my, another emotion it looks like he went full Hulk and, and, and ripped his shirt. He's, he's uh, frustrated maybe in the scores tent here. And he kind of took it out on the, on the old Nike polo. It reminded me of, uh, do you remember Patton Kazire uh, ripping it, trying to rip his hat in half at the BMW? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there's yeah. Here we, here we go. Here's, here's Roy. Just, it looked, he got slashed with a dagger in the chest or something. Just ripped it down down to his armpit um he he looks pretty pissed right there yeah i would not approach rory in this moment i don't think uh he should be pissed right like he he played terribly on sunday she, you know it's a course that and he talked about this on thursday he's like if you can carry it if you can cover 300 off the tee you just it just makes it so much easier and he just was he can't shoot 74 on Sunday, you know? And, and I think that, I don't know. I, I don't like, uh, yeah, I, th- I think, but- I think sometimes we look at Rory and it's like, you know, the, the perspective and the, and the, um, and he talked about this at CJ cup. He's like, my, my expectations are high, but maybe they're not high enough. And I think that's a little bit of what you're seeing right there of like, just being pissed off about it. I think that that's That's great. I think that's good for him. You know, I'm all for uh, angry golfers being pissed off, taking your job seriously, wanting to accomplish. I'm all for that. A little bit of perspective. This would have been Rory's second victory in two starts, right? So, (laughs) like, it's not like he hasn't won in in a while, right? Just came come off comes off the win uh, at the CJ Cup. But I I do think it's interesting. Generally, the community was uh, positive on angry Rory, which Rory has had his had his moments ripping the shirt throwing his club in the water, snapping it over his knee. I feel like some guys, maybe John Rahm, don't necessarily get the benefit of the doubt for being a passionate 
golfer. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because I think it's I think it's an interesting question. Like if this was Bryson, oh, it would not. It would be he's such a baby. Look at this guy. Or he's such a shirt. psycho. He thinks he's he thinks he's whatever. Yeah, it would have been a completely different discord. Yeah, and I think there's there's a reason that Rory gets the benefit of the doubt, but I also think that you know let's let's imagine this was Rom. I think. I think that I would be saying the same thing. Like, listen, golf is like, golf is psychotic. Like it's, and especially at that level, like you're, you're just, it's so frustrating to go out and, and, you know, have some of the stuff happen to you that these guys do. And as long as you're like, it's one thing to be like Sergio in the bunker at, in Saudi Arabia where you're like, yeah, you know, like taking like, carving up the course like that's that's not great you know that's not not good but it's another thing if you're i don't know it's hard like because even uh, i remember rom like what did he do like punched a sign at at, uh the uh (laughs) it wasn't shinnecock no No, it was uh it was the u.s open at uh what was the other was aaron hills he like punched a sign there and, and you're like oh that's not good but then if you do it to yourself, like, is that, but I don't know. There's just a lot there. Uh, so I think Rory gets a probably too much benefit of the doubt, of the doubt but I, I don't know that we give other people enough benefit of the doubt, especially somebody like a ROM or a JT when it comes to something like this. I think that's yeah, where I land fair. on it. Yeah. R- Rory completely deserves the benefit of, of the doubt. Others do as well. I draw the line at destroying the golf course. I think I think that's where I draw the line in some of like, you know, Sergio's cases. But uh, what otherwise, are, what, where do you end on throw, like tossing clubs, like throwing clubs? Personally, I don't do it because I feel as if, I, if for me, if I toss a club, the golf gods have won. Right. Like golf is hard enough. It, it is it, for me to show frustration. Uh, I, I will not give my competitors, my friends, the golf gods, uh, any, any satisfaction in that. If a pro throws a club, as long as it doesn't hit anybody, I don't really care. I don't care at all. Yeah. Like, uh, Hovland breaking his putter at, uh, was that a, or was that? He he slammed his bag, right? He took a, he took a, a, and, and, and smashed the, broke the putter a couple months ago. Or, and Rory threw his club at uh, Royal St. George's at the Open. I mean, it happens, you know, all the time. I, I, I don't think I. Th- I actually, I think I could be talked into that being a little bit worse than something like this. This looks worse because it looks <laughs> crazy. Well, because he doesn't right? have another shirt to change into. Like, yeah, it looks. Like, it, <laughs> he has to walk around like that. <laughs> it looks horrible. But I actually think like flinging a club is. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to get worked up about either one, but I just, I don't really think this is that bad relative to other stuff. I don't know. No, I don't, I don't think so either. Um, we will see, what did we decide? Is Rory going to, yeah, Rory, we'll see Rory yeah. at the Hero World Challenge. couple As of quick hits. Producer, with, sorry. Producer Jacob noted here, nothing tops, <laughs> uh, flipping off a lake. <laughs> But see, that's it probably a, like that's probably like the least accepted one because you got to like blur it off a of TV, right? Like you can't even show that. Yeah, and I don't think it's. I'm fine with it. Of course, because it's meaningless. It, it, but it is like socially, it is like socially the most unacceptable, in my opinion. But Wait, also you, the least, the least uh, malicious or hurtful <laughs> to anything or anyone. <laughs> Wait, is it? Uh, is he talking about? Um, Terrell Hatton? Hatton. Yeah, that's what I thought. No, he did. Yeah. He did. He took a shotgun to a lake. Oh, yeah, he, gave one of, he gave him one of these too. Yeah. He, he flipped. He flipped it off. Also, so he did the he did the PC version. You know where you just uh, do everything except extend the finger. But I think you have to give Hatton credit for just being the king of everything. The self flagellation was like also up there as well. Just whipping. And he himself. won. He yeah, won. I know. That's the best part. <laughs> he I wonder what we should bring him in for all like anything that happens like this and just have him like give it a grade, rank it, whatever he wants oh, to do. Yeah. I was about to say we almost need a ranking from the year of best freakouts. Who uh who destroyed the T marker at 
Oh, oh EVR. It, yeah. EVR. Okay, that was bad. That was my, maybe the worst moment of the year. Yeah, that that's not egregious. good. Egregious from just sort of a gentlemanly perspective. Of it was egregious from like a, there were guys standing back there who could have taken that shard in the throat. It yeah, was, it was that, ugly. The that uh, I went back through a bunch of stuff recently, but that that one was up there. The Kazira one was crazier than I remembered because uh, he tried to hit. He tried. To, he did the thing where he tried to throw his ball up and hit it, and he whiffed. Yeah, and then he that tried got to me like more upset, right? <laughs> yeah, and he tried to then he tried to like rip his hat in half, which seems like it'd be extraordinarily difficult like to yes. rip your hat in half like rory went with like the already pre kind of pre-cut like it's like yeah. it's like pulling pulling off uh tearaway pants you know you're like oh it's not that hard. you know it's pretty easy to do but ripping your hat in half seems hard yeah hats oh we've got smart. it wow yeah. look at this producer jacob this is from okay i'll do I'm, commentary on this yeah. i'm pretty sure this is from the bmw championship back in august and he misses a putt and you can you can see he'll, he'll, he'll you can, you can feel it boiling up right here, and then he well oh, oh he he, oh. he whiffs he whiffs it, and then now you just want to like break everything. So right. I think we get a putter snap coming yeah, he snaps up. Snaps it over his he, leg, I believe. He goes slow motion, just oh this feels so good right there, yeah. boom. Good. Yeah. Could you could you do that? Do you think you could do? Is that easy, as easy as it looks? For sure. And now we get the hat and he just tries to he tries to rip it in half. Oh God. Yeah. And this is what wait, did he try I, to separate the bill from the rest of it? Is that the is that the tear point? Where do you go I, for that? I think that's the spot. I think where the bill meets the uh like the back like the side of the hat. It's gotta you, be the you, place to go. Yeah. You got some leverage there. And I think he got it. Like I think he I think he did rip it in half. Um, when great work missed, there, producer he, Jacob. When he missed the putter, when he throws the ball up in the air and whiffs it with the putter, and then just leaves the ball behind and doesn't even like go. It's like he is he's at full, he's at 100 in that yeah, moment. For sure. He's mm. he's just steaming. Very good meltdown. Quick odds and ends. We're gonna talk about Taylor Gooch because he deserves it, but quick odds and ends. Uh Jin Young Co. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable wins the LPG top LPGA, excuse me, top honors. How about this stat? 63 greens in a row she hit this week. I've not hit 63 greens this year. I have she not hits, either. She hit 63 in a row. That is one of the most absurd things I've ever heard. I played on Friday. I think I hit two greens. Well, 61 uh, more to go. <laughs> <laughs> it was two out of 18 though. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, uh, it's super. Wait, it wasn't 63 in a row. We've got some. Oh, I thought it was 63 in a row. Sorry. I misread that, but why do I think it was 63 greens? Regardless, if you're in 63 greens in a 72 hole event. No, here, Brent, Brentley Romine of, uh, golf. First of all, they go by golf. Now. Did you know that it's not the golf channel anymore? No, what? Golf. golf. No. Okay. That can't be real. Re I'm really? I'm, I'm like positive. It's just golf. Hey, watch that on golf. <laughs> Not the golf channel. That's, that's, I don't know if I like that. Uh, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. My brain. I'm not asking brain. you to defend it. I'm just saying I don't really love <laughs> yeah. it. Believe it or not, I was not in the decision making process. Of that. Uh, yeah. So Brentley uh, Romine tweets us out. Jin Young Ko capped her week by hitting her final 63 greens in regulation. 63 in a row. That's pretty good. And she beat uh, who? Nelly. Yeah, Nelly tried to keep up, man, but she there was a stretch where where Jin Young hit like she made like eight birdies in a row or something. She was absolutely she was absolutely scorching. Uh, now the second time in three years she's been the uh, player of the year. Yeah, so she won. What did she win this year? She won a lot of things this year. She won, and they all happened after July f or after uh, like basically the second half of the year. She won the Volunteer of America Classic. That's the one over by me, in, in uh, I think that's in. The Colony. Yeah, Colony, Texas. I played that course. It's an awesome course. She wins the Portland Classic in September. She wins the Cognizant Founders Cup in October, BMW Ladies Championship in October, and now this, mm -hmm. the uh, the Tour Championship. And five, over, she, five over last nine events she won. <laughs> it's crazy that she hit the last 63 greens in a row and won by one. 
Yeah. The 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 degree to which you know the 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 ladies on on the LPGA just just carve up these courses is it's you know because they're they're not they're they're doing it differently than than sometimes happens on the on the men's side although they have the you know they often overpower courses as well but they just the consistency they have that like, I, like I'm almost not shocked that Jin Young Ko would hit 63 greens in a row it, it's a shocking thing but it, it's also like if you watch the uh, consistency with with, the, with which they a lot of them play from tee to green it is it's unbelievable i mean it's staggering and that's why i think it's so fun to to marry that to go into i think of a um what was the the u.s open course a couple years ago uh charleston yeah producer jacob will know that's that's his his that's his area of the country of the southeast region country club of charleston country club of charleston so when you marry this classic amazing course with their ability at the highest level just to hit just to be super consistent like that from tee to green I think it's fascinating to watch. I think it's really, really fun to watch uh, on on the LPGA. One point five million dollars uh, headed to the bank account there, and uh, that will probably be more next year because lots of uh, purse increases for the twenty twenty two season with nearly eighty seven million dollars in purses. Uh, across Good the for them. That's yeah. that's awesome. Like yeah. I, I I I think that. They have a ton of interesting, great personalities at the top there. And, you know, I think even even this year, I've just become more uh, – it's just – it's fun to follow. It really is. And there's there's great tournaments, good personalities. And I think I think it's cool to see women's golf thriving. It really is. And, and uh, I, I'm hopeful that that continues. Absolutely. Congratulations, Jin Young Ko. Congratulations, Taylor. Gooch, who won the RSM Classic, and he did a KP pretty dominating fashion. A Sunday 64, that's six under. Never really seemed like he was at risk uh, to make a bogey. Did not make one on Sunday. His last bogey was the 10th hole on Saturday. I mean, this was an exclamation point on what I would say was the best fall that anybody that anybody had. Yeah, you and I were talking about that. Uh, is Taylor Gooch the fall PGA Tour player of the year? And I think that – I think he – yeah. I mean, who are your other candidates even? Well, I mean, if you say – okay, so you got to go with guys who won, uh, obviously, now that Gooch has won. So so Hideki wins the Zozo, yeah. but he only played four times. His other best finish was a sixth at the Fortinet, and he had a 59th at CJ Cup and, and Shriners. Uh, uh, Shriners was like a 67th. Rory, let's see what Rory did. Uh, he only I mean, played he played, once he played, on the played, yeah he played once i think that's part of the problem is is guys that uh it's hard to it's hard to judge four four rounds against somebody like gooch who played in i think six tournaments so he's got the win 60th at houston which his first round he was the first round leader then got into the weird schedule i'd give him a pass for those three rounds mayakoba t11 t5 at summit club t11 at shriners t4 at fortinet so you're telling me in the f uh, six events that he played, five of them were T11 or better, and he won. Guess which one I picked him for our one and done for? Houston. <laughs> That's nonsense. That's tough. Just complete nonsense. Uh, yeah. And, you know, th this, is, this is a little bit what the fall is for. Not four, but it, it's a, it's a it's a great benefit of the fall is when you have a guy that's in his in his twenties that hadn't really broken through yet that uh, you know gets to kind of have a have a year not a year but like have a have a you know mini year in the fall and now uh, you know he's gonna be in he's gonna be in the masters he's gonna be in the majors like it, it's it's he set himself up for what could be a, a, a 2022 in which, you know, it could rise to be a, what's he ranked right now? Like 40 something. He, he will be, I just looked this up. Our, our resident uh, Nosferatu with the Sunday update on OWGR. He will be 33rd on Monday morning. Oh, okay. I did. I didn't realize. I thought he was around 50. And so, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So yeah, I mean, he's somebody who could be in the top twenty-five in the world right now, and and it's he's got a foundation, I think, to 
to build on now uh, going into 2022, which is, you know, for somebody like him, it's who's he's not a he's a really good player. He's not a Morikawa, uh, right? Who's who, he's not a Spieth, he's not a JT or something like that. But you can now start to like contend with those guys at some of these bigger events, uh, and I think that's that's what the f- to me that's what the fall is for. It's not for you know the Hideki's and Rory's of the world necessarily to win, but rather to see guys like Gooch establish himself. And then all of a sudden you get thrown in the mix going into to the start of next year. Start of the year 81st uh, in OWGR started the fall 66 will be 33rd. We talked, we've talked about this before because we talk about Gooch a lot on this show. He is, um, to me, this is always a very good sign. When you hear your peers rumbling about how good you are, we heard it a lot with Sung Jay when he was coming up on, on tour um, from the Corn Ferry. You, I've heard it a lot with Gooch. Uh, and guys just being like, yeah, Scheffler, just like, wow, he strikes it well. Like when you get your peers saying this, it is usually a very, very good sign. And now Gooch uh, making good on a lot of those comments. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. And, you know, somebody else uh, that we heard it or we have heard it a ton about is uh, Zalatoris. Yeah. Right. I, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, would you take Zalatoris or Gooch for 2022? Let's say, let's say not, let's say most, uh, let's say most money earned for 2022. I hate this. Um, They're both in the Masters. Yep. 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 They're probably both uh, in, in everything, honestly. Yeah. Uh, I, it is so easy to say Gooch in this spot because his last six events have been phenomenal and he, and he won, but I think, you know, we're going to get a reset in January. These guys are going to, you know, go back to kind of their longer term stuff. I think you still have to go Zalatoris, but I, I really like Gooch. I love Gooch. He's a great ball striker, putted well this week. The putters is the thing that lets him down. Same thing with Zalatoris, but, um, I think I'd still have to go Zalatoris. Yeah, I think I probably would too. Um, I'm looking at Gucci's numbers right now. You know, he, what's he done in majors? Like, what's he done in in majors? Because I don't like, know that he's Zalator played in very. He's got Zalator does a couple of good finishes in majors, right? Or, yeah, yeah. He does. Uh, does here's, he have anything? Here's to... Gooch. Here's okay. Gooch. Uh, 2017, he played the U.S. Open. Might have been an amateur. When did he turn? No, nah, 66. He finished 66 yeah, at the U.S. Open. He's 30, so so probably not. Uh, missed the cut of the PGA Championship in 2020, T44 in 2021, T33 at the Open Championship this year. So he has uh, played four majors. Best finish, yeah. T33. You know, I think the thing about him that's and, – and this is true of um, – you know, we talk about Sam Burns. We talk about, uh, talk about Max Homa. If you look at his – uh, strokes gain numbers. So going back all the way to 2017, he's a he's a minus 0.3. Then he's the next year he's a minus 0.2. Then he's a plus 0.4. And then he's a plus 0.5. And then last season he's a plus 0.8. And right now he's a plus 1.6. That probably won't be maintained a plus 1.6, no. but that's improvement for one, two, three, four, five straight seasons. Yeah, that's that's meaningful. Like that's a yes. that's a real that's a trajectory. That's a real thing, and I always think it's impressive um, because I think it it's um, it's emblematic of a ton of work, right? You don't just fall into improving your strokes gain number by a full stroke over five years per round. You don't that that, you, that doesn't just happen. Not at not at the PGA Tour level. It might happen for me and you because we don't play enough, but not at this level. And so. I think that's cool because it signifies that somebody is learning and putting in effort and putting in work and, you know, now getting a, a tour win is, is kind of reaping some of the benefits of that. To put a bow on the Zalatoris major discussion, he has finished six majors. Remember he WD from the open championship with that, that back stinger that he had from a shot from the rough six major championships. He's finished three top eights. A runner up at the Masters, a T eight at the PGA Championship, a T six at the US Open. The wing foot, I forgot about that one. Was the the the, P- the, <laughs> was the PGA was that uh, Harding or Kiowa? Kiowa. Oh man, I don't oh I do remember that because he holed out at one point and remember he raised his hands over his head and he had the whoop on his on his bicep and it looked like it was it was his wrist. 
It's like, oh, Zalatoris is wearing a whoop on his wrist. It's really around like the top of his arm. That's pretty good. I, I can't, I can't, the whoop around the, the arm thing, I can't, I can't endorse that. Not a fan. Oh, I'm, I'm in on it. What? Do you wear one around your arm? I do. You yeah. do? I do. Yeah. What, what's the benefit of it? Well, the benefit is that it doesn't look like you're, I, I had a, I got a comment from somebody at, ch at church one time. I was speaking and they're like, why are you wearing, why are you wearing, are you wearing two, two watches? watches? <laughs> yeah. I know. I get that all the time. Why yeah. And watches? I was like, well, I can't have that. This is silly, you know? And, uh, so I had to go, I had to go around the, uh, yeah. Around the, the arm. We are giving Whoop some free ad time here. Sorry, producer they can, Jacob. They can send us some product. We'll we'll wear it. Um, all right. Anything else on Taylor Gooch or the RSM Classic? Uh, Webb was number one from T to Green and in approach play for the week, which I think is. I think you and you and I are bullish on him going into twenty twenty two. Very, very yeah. bullish. And he yeah. just the finishes haven't been there. This is his second top ten since RBC. So what is that? eight months seven months but uh he he's hitting the ball well and uh, i'm ex i'm excited for his 2022 I, I feel like i've said that about 30 guys and it's true and uh, i'm man i'm pumped about 2022 golf in 22 is gonna be awesome just as it was in 2021 i'm really excited about it the game is strong. The game is deep. Our stars are back at the top. It is going to be an absolute blast. We've got to do our odds and ends. We've got to update our best bets, give some recaps for our one and done selections. But first, we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. And we're back. After a tough week with our best bets, KP, we are back in the green. Yes, the only wager that we lost uh, was Greg's. Kevin Kisner to finish inside the top 20. Kevin Kisner nearly finished dead last. Uh, was that, that could arguably be one of the more surprising results, good or bad. One of the more surprising results of the week. Uh, he, yeah, he was plus five. That is, yeah, that's shocking. He was down with uh, our boy, Martin trainer, JT Poston, uh, Keegan, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm saying there. Um, we did talk about Rory Sabatini getting DQ'd for having a sticker on his driver. Yeah, so so for those who don't know... N normal uh, sport. Yeah, so I, I tweeted it out. They make those stickers very, obviously by design, very discreet that you put on for like launch monitors or whatever so that you can get your club data and it's easier to read. Sometimes you put the stickers on the balls as well. Uh, but apparently sabatini uh played with one now was this so then he calls it on himself like whose fault is that is that the caddy's fault is that the player's fault it's kind of weird it's just like i don't know is that is that what we need to be focused on we've got all this like we can't go to we can't go to wingfoot in three years because players are too long and it's like well you got a sticker on the back here on wherever on your club you're disqualified it's not it's like just it was like, one of those face things that go over the entire face that tells you how your impact was. <laughs> yeah, it's just like we're, we're, we just lose the forest for the trees in this ridiculous sport. I mean, we really do. And I love it because it creates content for us to talk about how ridiculous it is that Rory Sabatini had a sticker on his driver and he can't play in the rest of the tournament. And when you when you pull it out of like the the context that it was in, it's it's really ridiculous. Like it's really preposterous. But yeah, bummer for him. Uh, I'm yeah, I'm shocked at that. I didn't. I I don't think I realized that Kisner had been that bad over the first couple. Of, I mean, the first two, the first day was like the easiest scoring day in PGA Tour history. Yeah, and and, and uh, yeah, so that's yeah, not a good outcome for him. Uh, Louis Oosthuizen also down at the bottom of the board because he withdrew after uh, his opening round, or I guess it was more accurately probably before his second round because I think it was Friday morning, which was uh, beneficial to me because I had Russell Henley at even money over Louis Oosthuizen, so that's a cash for me. Coach, Coach didn't give the Gooch enough credit. Gooch over Adam Scott minus 125, but uh, that was just a matchup. Should have took the 34-1 to or 38-1. to for Gooch to win, but that puts Coach in the win column as well. And KP, you were uh, you went a little a little longer, two hundred to one in a three ball. Adam Scott does indeed beat 
Kevin Kisner, who we talked about, and Alex Norin to win this best bet for you. And quite frankly, uh, because those two missed the cut, you did not even have a sweat, my friend. Congratulations. Yeah, I wish it was 200 to 1. It was actually just 2 to 1, I think. Uh, Did I say 200 to 1? Yeah, that would have been sweet. I I would have loved that. If you can get any three ball at 200 to 1, you take it. I don't care. (laughs) For sure. (laughs) It could be Rick and I playing a best ball in the Arnold Palmer in March. You should take that. We'll beat somebody one out of, you know, 200 times. Come on. Totally. (laughs) Uh, it, this, you know, what Greg mentioned on Tuesday almost happened though, where all the, we all had some, we all had like guys in each of the bets and that we almost all, uh, cashed out, even though they were kind of going against each other. By the way, I think Louis is like very, has very much for me become, uh, like kind of Brooks light, right? He kills the man. Then in these other events, it's like, well, Louis hurt. He did, you know, like he doesn't. He's just not. He doesn't care as much about the non major. Like he, it's just like the the pattern of what they do, both at the majors and the non majors, seems to to match up quite a bit. Interesting. I yeah. haven't thought about it that way. Okay, I, I was like, trying to think of the similarities between Louis Eustace and Brooks Kepka, well, there's, but I there guess that none. makes sense. <laughs> there are none. But like, but Louis thrives at the majors. Obviously, Brooks thrives at the majors. Louis. Uh, he, I don't know. You you watch him in other tournaments. You're like, I, I guess it's you know he's fine, but he doesn't really make a ton of noise. And then he'll be injured every once in a while and be out for a while. But then he'll show up at the majors, and you're like, well, Louis probably going to top ten this week, just like Brooks. So I don't know. There's a lot of similarity there. Interesting. Keep an eye on that moving forward. So three and one in our best bets, which leaves us with one final thing to do: give the one and done update. And frankly, there's not all that much update to give. We didn't do all that well, KP. You. Believe it or not, uh, win the week. Well, you tie at the top for the week. You had Russell Henley. He got you 72000 He moves your total up to 616000 for the year, but uh, quite frankly, that 72000 was better than what everybody else did. Yeah, I wish I could flip-flop these, though. Put Henley back in the Houston slot and take Gooch for uh, for RSM. I I. I did those backward, but yeah, that's fine. Uh, it, you know, not not a great outcome, but uh, I don't know. I made up ground on See, most of you. Yeah, Sia and Jacob had Corey Connor, so Sia moves to six hundred ninety-four thousand. Jacob moves to three million. Jacob still in second. Coach and Greg both had Kevin Kisner. They're going to get zero dollars, and Mark and I. Uh, both had Scotty Scheffler. We're getting 16,416. So I don't even think any of the order of the standings actually changed here. Um, and I used Scotty Scheffler and got only 16K, which is uh, not ideal, my friend. No, it's not ideal for somebody like Scheffler, who's the top 20 guy right now. Um, I feel I sh- feel less bad about Henley getting 72 than you should feel about Scheffler getting 60. For sure. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, I, I don't uh, – we're not going to do this again for six weeks. I mean, the, the one and done. We'll do this again tomorrow. but We're not going to do a Hero World Challenge? Oh, maybe we are. I mean, we're I'm sure to, Jacob get- – Jacob will probably do the shark shootout on us. I mean, who, who knows? Q, QBE. QBE. Um, yeah, I mean, we'd have to, like, burn a star unless, you know, there's a lot of stars in the Hero. I don't know what the prize purse is. It's I'll take crazy. Stenson. That would be a good one to use. I was going to say, I yeah. think everyone would just take Henrik Stenson and there would be no net gain or Guaranteed loss. money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guaranteed the, the, money. Only, the only effect is everyone just loses Henrik Stenson. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you want to save him for the Arnold Palmer. He always plays great at, at uh, Bay Hill. He does. Um, yeah, so we're going to do this again tomorrow, which is Monday, and we're going to be doing uh, Mailbag. And then also, KP, we've got... Bryson V Brooks 12 round heavyweight bout Las Vegas. That is the day after American Thanksgiving. That's on Friday. American Thanksgiving. It is on Friday. Brooks versus Brooksy. I cannot wait. It's going to be fun. Did you see the Strixon tease video? Yeah, that's not Patrick Reed. People were talking about that's that's Patrick. That's that's Brooks. The I only think. thing that no, it's almost certainly Brooks. The only thing that was Patrick Reed esque is he wears that the very first uh, thing where he's putting the, the ball on the ground. Yeah, Patrick yeah. Reed wears one of those like um, 
I almost called it puka bead. shell. It's not a puka it's shell. Like a, yeah, it's beaded. like a bead bracelet. It looks yeah. like something my daughter would make. Correct. Yes. Uh, well, Brooks also wears one of them. Also, I could see the biceps on said golfer, and that was not Patrick Reed. Also, <laughs> the that like you know Nike shoe, the way it flies out, um, you know when he swings, it appears that uh, Strixon is going to announce Brooks as a uh, as a what do they call that ambassador? Brand ambassador. Do you ever yeah. play the game where they haven't showed the uh, the player's yes. name and you just try to guess who they were by their swing or their yes. putt or whatever? Yes, every time. It's amazing. You did that at the U.S. Open. We were on cam, or I was on camera with you, and somebody was stand. I don't even. They weren't even swinging. They were standing behind me, and the way they were standing, you're like, ah, I think that's Henrik Stenson, and it was. Oh yeah, I remember was, that. That was crazy. <laughs> Someone on the was, range. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was, yeah. That's that was, the best game. That was impressive. There's a couple that are really hard. Uh, Carlos Ortiz and Jordan Speed, like from a distance, are very hard. Extremely difficult. Yeah. So difficult. Because, because they both wear uh, like the bright UA stuff. The uh, t- uh, So the guys that I think look alike that are hard, Tyler McCumber and Chris Kirk. Hmm. When well, they both have their, that big shaggy beard, yeah. When they both, when they're both like very bearded, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When, it, when Kirk doesn't, then that they don't look alike. But yeah, when they're yeah. when they have beard, I don't know. We can we can move on. Uh, there's nothing to move on to. Anything else before we get out of here? Before the R- I'm, your RSM Tiger European Tour. All right, we'll be back at you uh, next week. Make sure to get your mailbag questions in either a five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts, please, and or a tweet when Jacob tweets it out at first cut pod, he'll tweet out the prompt. You can respond. Uh, we'll go through as many of those as possible, but for now, let me thank producer Jacob. There's all the hard work behind the scenes that right there, Kyle Porter. You can follow him on Twitter at Kyle Porter CBS. You can follow me at Rick run. Good. This has been the first cut and we'll catch you next time.